Hello everyone, my name is Shannon Patterson and I am a third year student pharmacist at WSU College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. Today I will be interviewing Tim Maynard on his career journey in the field of pharmacy. Tim is currently the Senior Director of Talent Acquisition at the Albertsons Company and a WSU College of Pharmacy alumni. Welcome Tim. Hey, thanks Shannon, glad to be here. All right, so just to get us started today, can you tell us about what you do specifically at the Albertsons Company? Yeah, it might be a little bit interesting to know I don't do anything pharmacy related um, anymore. So uh, my role has kind of evolved into being the senior director of talent acquisition, which what that translates to is I lead the team that does all of our hiring across the entire company. So that ranges from digital to technology to our supply chain. We do hire pharmacists, obviously, uh, and then also all of our corporate functions and in our stores. Nice. So that is interesting that you said that you got out of the pharmacy portion. So how did you become interested in that specific portion of the company? Yeah, I would love to tell you that I had a great deliberate plan and I was really good at pathing it out. Um, previously, I was leading our talent acquisition function for pharmacy. So I oversaw the hiring of the 6,500 pharmacies, pharmacists in our stores and our 1,800 pharmacies. Uh, and we went through a massive reorganization as a company. We had a new human resources leader and he tapped me on the shoulder and said, I, you know, I think you've done a nice job over in pharmacy. How would you like to try running it for the entire company? Wow. And I, I would love to tell you, I just said yes right away, but certainly there was a lot of thought that went into that. Yeah, definitely. That's a big, big transition, I would say. Um, so what would you say is the most exciting thing that you currently do right now in your role? Yeah, that's a really good question. So as I think about it, the team that I'm leading has the opportunity to shape the face and the future of the company. So every hiring decision we make, and um, we do that in partnership with hiring managers, but every decision leads to a new talented individual that can enter our company. And for me, I think it's exciting and rewarding both to see people grow and develop, you know, see where you hire someone in at maybe a manager level role and they end up as a vice president. And it, it's just really rewarding to see that you connected the right person with the right opportunity. Absolutely, it definitely contributes to the culture and to, uh, that you um, want the Albertsons company to portray. So that's pretty awesome that you get to have a direct impact on that. Um, what would you say is the most common misconception that people have about a career in pharmacy? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll share mine. So I kind of thought, uh, <laughs> I thought back through my history was where were my misperceptions, you know, as I was coming through pharmacy school and moving into pharmacy. And I think one of them was really around you kind of, I came up in the community pharmacy side of things. So you, know, you graduate, you become a staff pharmacist. If you really like to manage, you can become a pharmacy manager. And that's really the extent that I thought pharmacy went. And I think where I was probably misinformed or had a misperception of it is just how deep that goes. Cause you can do corporate support functions and government relations and compliance, learning and development, marketing, um, you name it. And it's one of those things that you don't give much thought to when you walk up to a pharmacy that there's you know a whole army of 200 corporate people that are making that experience happen. You're really just looking right behind the counter. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a common misconception of a lot of people in pharmacy school too, as we see We'll, we'll, we'll get our PharmD, but we don't see a lot of what the PharmD can actually get us in the wide spectrum um, and beyond just working behind the counter. Yeah, I think the other interesting thing that goes with that is a lot of those are experience driven. So it's, you know, you're not going to school to get a pharmacy marketing degree. There's not some bachelors out there that you can pursue. And say, I have this skill set. It's really kind of getting your hands dirty and doing it in real time with employers. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what sort of advice would you give a pharmacy student if they are interested in pursuing a career in your field? Yeah, I should probably take that one two ways and whether you want to be talent acquisition or if you want to be a pharmacist. Um, if I take it from the talent acquisition perspective, the easiest way I would say to start getting information and understanding what the field's all about and what experiences are required is talk to the people that hire you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're hired as an intern or you're hired as a grad intern, pharmacist, pick up the phone and call the person that interviewed you and hired you and ask the question similar to what you just asked me. Like, how do you get into this profession? Um, what experiences did you have coming into it? If someone was passionate about it, how would you recommend they get there? And if you have organizations that are really well developed, they can help connect those dots and say, you know, it could be, we want you to go out on campus and start experiencing what a campus career day looks like. And that's a great way to get your foot in the door and start getting recruiting experience. Um, you can also start looking at internal talent. So if your company has intern programs, mm -hmm. how do you get your hands on that? And how do you develop the talent that you have internally? Because that is a form of internal recruiting and developing your own talent. So I think there's a ton of experiences every employer that employs pharmacists can offer in terms of recruiting because everyone's hiring. Just take the time to ask the question of 
how do I do what you do? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Utilizing your connections, I think, is a huge part of the pharmacy field. And for us in pharmacy school, we need to remind ourselves of that going forward, too. Um, so what do you see the future of pharmacy being for us in yeah. pharmacy school? <laughs> That's a really good question. So I'm a tech guy, so I probably take the technology slant on things. Um, so with, with my talent acquisition team, everything we do is data and digital. We have data drive all of our decisions. We leverage AI and ML and all of our decision making. So I view that through a pharmacy lens. And where I think it's gonna go is we're gonna move a lot of your normal assembly functions. So think the lick stick, count and pour, not the, the not so fun stuff. That's all going to be automated. Eventually, our machine learning algorithms are going to be smart enough to check prescriptions accurately, to fill prescriptions accurately. We have good robotics now. I don't think the machine learning is tied to the robotics as well as we would like it to be. But as we do that, that means pharmacists are going to have to evolve. And we've been saying this for years now, but I think with technology kind of pushing the precipice of it, pharmacists, we're going to have to find a way to get compensated for our cognitive skills, to get reimbursed for the counseling, for the education, for the training that we're doing for our patients. And when you move that automation and machine learning into the back end of how we package up prescriptions, if we take that function out of it, that frees up the pharmacist a lot more to engage in those activities. And then it just becomes evolving compensation or reimbursement models that are adherent to pharmacists being compensated for that type of service. Absolutely. That is great insight that we will all be happy to hear. Um, what, um, what are you looking um, to, when you're hiring a new grad, what's the number one thing that you look at in a candidate? Yeah, really good question. Um, I would say capability and potential would probably be two of the top ones. So capability, what type of capacity do you have to learn more? Um, the same goes for potential is where can you learn, where can you grow, where can you develop, and are you willing to? And, mm -hmm. and I think part of that comes into adaptability. So pharmacy, you just asked me a question about pharmacy change. Mm -hmm. Pharmacy is going to change. That's the inevitable. Um, I was just joking with Linda that 19 years ago, I heard pharmacy was going to change, and I'm still hearing it today. So if you want to be a pharmacist or advance in pharmacy, just be ready for change and be adaptable and be an early adopter. Um, and the last thing I would say on that, and, and I look at this through as we're evaluating resumes or as we're sitting through interviews or when we're doing talent evaluation or selection, is what are the differentiations between each individual and their peer? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes where I see kind of undifferentiated candidates come through is you list a list of responsibilities on a resume. Well, that doesn't tell me how you do something different or how you do something better than your peer group. Um, same in an interview, oftentimes, especially when people get really nervous, they kind of struggle to champion themselves. And uh, people oftentimes will err on the side of humility when they're interviewing as well. So just being that champion for yourself and truly working to differentiate yourself and helping whoever's evaluating you, whether it be at a resume level, an interview level, what you're really capable of and how you do things either different than your peers, like where do you have a novel or innovative approach to things, or how do you do them better than your peers? And for me, that's usually what moves someone to the top of the heap is if you see someone who really understands it, they understand that they're doing it differently or they have a good idea or they're doing it better. Those are the people that you want on your team. Absolutely. Like we were saying, it's all about that culture too. And you want those people on your team that have those individuality aspects. So what's the best professional advice that you have ever received? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. Again, um, one that comes back to me, I had a leader and his name's Chris Ermshire. So he was my supervisor three different times just through my journey through our company. And uh, something he said early on, I, I made a mistake in a very early role and it was, I would call it a rookie mistake. It came out of naivety. I didn't realize I was making a mistake. And in my head, I kind of went through this arduous thought process of uh, how do I talk about this? How do I tell him? What is this conversation going to be like? And really what came out of that conversation in the end is he said, you know, everyone on this team makes mistakes. You just made one. It's a teachable moment. And he said, so what did you learn from this mistake? How are you going to handle it differently next time and move on? And that's something that kind of stuck with me because that was the first time I was in a corporate support role. I had more responsibility than I've had historically. I was reporting to a high level leader and I kind of just I cringe like I don't even know how to talk about this and to hear that the feedback was you're going to keep making mistakes and it's something that stuck with me not only in how I approach my career it's made me way more comfortable diving into things head first and knowing I'm going to make a mistake I'm probably going to fail 
um, but also helping with my team as well as you bring on more junior or less experienced individuals just know they're going to make mistakes and use it as an opportunity to help them coach them and you know, help them be better help them better understand why a mistake occurred um, almost like when a pharmacy error occurs just going back and doing a root cause analysis and going hey how did we get here Mm -hmm. Or were there processes that led to this? Was it people problems that led to this? Was this just kind of an absent mindedness? You had a moment where you were on autopilot and truly diagnosing the whole situation to help an individual become better or become more talented. Absolutely. That is some amazing advice. I think a lot of us as pharmacy students have a fear of mistakes, a massive fear, especially when we're, you know, taught about how to improve all these errors. So that's really um, good advice for all of us to hear, I would say. But I think that's all the time we have now. So Tim, I wanted to thank you so much for taking a moment to speak with us and the entire college. And thank you for your experience that will inspire many students um, to go after their dreams. Well, thanks Shannon, I appreciate the time.